Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another painting video. This time we're going to be focusing on something a little bit more specific um, instead of going broadly on an entire miniature. I just want to hone in on one specific skill and try and help you guys take it to the next level. Now when I say next level, I'm not talking about golden demon level or you know even even competition painting standard it's just for if you want to take your skin tones to the next level so you want to add an extra little bit of detail to your characters your bosses your heroes champions that kind of thing then this video should help you get there the sponsor of today's video is arch villain games who very kindly sent me across the files for this stunning miniature uh, and as soon as i did see this miniature and i printed them out i knew this was the perfect model to make this video with uh, it's a video i wanted to make for a little while now so this was absolutely perfect it lined up beautifully so that's what we're going to do in today's video i will talk to you a little bit more about arch villain games later on in the video before I get started, I want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. You grow ever on, and thank you so much for the support. It does mean the world to me. If you're interested in getting involved, there are links to my Patreon below. With my Patreon, you get access to a private Discord server and access to an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year, which I don't think you can put a price on. All right, guys, without further ado, let's work on some skin. Okay guys, this is the miniature that I decided from this month's release from Arch Villain Games. It is an absolutely monstrous piece. I think if I was to try and describe the themes that went into it, it has something to do with gladiators, Celtic designs, and I believe orcs. Because this guy is wearing a full face mask, it means I can kind of veer away from doing the green skin and actually play around with some human skins to teach you guys um, a few tips and tricks to help you with your uh, skin game. So it's, it's very simple. It starts with your base coat. From there, we move up to a mid-tone. And then after that, we go to a highlight. It's a very simple way of looking at it. It doesn't have to be these three specific colors. It just has to be three skin tones that go from dark to mid to light. Simple as any tone. You want to do Asian, you want to do black you want to do whatever you want to just get the right three skin tones right three skin paints and then go from there and then the same system will pretty much apply for the um, each and every one of those tones so i'm going to start with barbarian brawn which is my base paint and all you want to do with this paint is try and get a nice opaque color on all of your skin basically this is blocking in all of the skin on the entire miniature it is important you might want to go over with two thin coats to try and get a solid coat. Make sure there's no brush strokes. You're not trying to kind of make any bits kind of filled in with paint or anything like that. You want to just get a nice, solid, smooth coat of paint across the surface you want to paint. Now, obviously, this guy is a barbarian gladiator man, so he is not wearing much clothing at all. This one's actually wearing quite a bit, but there is still enough showing that I think it's a perfect example of a model to use for this. So after you've managed to apply a solid base coat of your um, skin tone to the entire miniature, it's then time to move up to your mid-tone. And this is where we're actually going to be paying attention to what and where we are painting, the direction, the pressure of the brush, all those kind of bits and pieces. So I'm going to focus on this area in here with the armpit and the bicep and all that kind of thing because it's really nice to find muscles. It's really easy to pick them out and to give you guys the example of what I'm trying to achieve. So for this, we're gonna to go to Dwarven Skin, which is our mid-tone. And as you can see, I'm being quite soft on the brush. I'm not putting a lot of pressure down and I'm going for vertical stripes. Stripes are feathering or whatever way you wanna call it is the easiest way I can think to layer up to a slightly higher standard than just kind of slapping paint on. Much more advanced painters than me, or even just a little bit more advanced painters than me, will do things like wet blend to smooth the two coats together. This is something that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, and obviously a whole different set of skills. So I don't bother with it myself. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying, falling into the mediocre hobbies remit, um, I want this to be as achievable as possible for everybody. So how this works is I'm going in and basically layering up all the muscle parts but leaving that previous, the brawn color behind in all of those really deep recesses. I know I've said this in a bunch of videos before, but I'm trying to go into a bit more detail and giving you a bit more of a direct example. And as you can see, I'm starting to leave those lines behind. I'm picking out those distinct muscle groups. Some artists and some hobbyists out there will argue a little bit about this style, saying that you're going to end up with the kind of floating muscle syndrome where 
Uh, each muscle doesn't look like it's attached to the other parts. And I understand where they're coming from. And if you're trying to paint a competition piece and you're, this thing is going to be judged by people, then for sure, maybe that's something that you need to worry about. But for me, the way you paint it like this and then it goes on a tabletop or it goes on a shelf or it goes more than three feet away from you, those floating muscle things do doesn't really exist for me. I think it looks really slick and really clean. And I'm going to follow it through. So as you can see, I've done uh, the first layer job on all of the skin. Everything is still super defined. And the mid-tone has been applied. From here, this is where we jump up to the highlight color. Before I get into that final highlight, I just want to say a huge thank you to my sponsor of today's video, which is of course Arch Villain Games. This month's range of miniatures is no less impressive than any other of the incredible releases these guys have done since the beginning of their sci-fi range, I think six or seven months ago now. One thing you'll notice uh, by the videos that I make is that I actually have no obligation as to which miniature from their range each month that I paint up. I could easily pick the smallest miniature they do and make a video that is much easier to produce and make and a lot less time consuming. But I find myself always drawn to the biggest, coolest sculpts that they do without a second's hesitation because I just cannot resist them. As you can see, this month is no different. I have chosen the Colossal Barbarian um, to uh, paint up and show you guys how to paint some skin. This definitely will not be the only miniature from this range that I will be painting up. If you guys are interested in joining them, there will be links below that will take you to their site where you'll get all the information that you need. Once again, huge thank you to Archibald Games. And for this, we're going to go into Elven Skin. Now, we're basically going to be doing exactly the same thing as we did in the previous step. That streaky lines, as you can see, there's gaps between the lines. And we're being a lot softer on our brush. Our paint is a little bit thinned. We are in no way, shape or form looking for full opacity here. We want the previous la layers to uh, show through to give that impression of all the blended work. And obviously we're not going uh, as full coverage as the previous layer. So as you can see when I'm applying this level, there's like almost like a step. You can, you can see the bronze color, then you can see the dwarf color, and then you can see the elf color kind of stepping up on each other. And if you take your time, follow through with this, practice it on a bunch of models. Orcs are a brilliant example of models to practice this on. They're all basically beefcakes. <laughs> a lot of musculature to uh, paint up and practice on. So if you have any of them lying around, any old models, it's not to say you have to paint them in green skin, you can paint them in human skin if you just want to practice, although the model will look creepy as hell when you're done. And even with this, you can go on and do an extra coat two or three if you need to, if you want to build up uh, certain colors in some areas where maybe light is going to hit it more on bits like deep in the armpit where the shadow is going to be and not a lot of lights going and you don't have to go in and do another level or another shade or another anything. You can just leave it nice and dark. But if you follow through and do this across the entire uh, miniature skin wise, you will end up with quite a nice result. And this is the floating island syndrome that people are talking about. From this plate, when it's three inches away from the camera lens, it doesn't look amazing. But when you take it away and look at it afterwards, it does look really good. Here we're going into Reichland Flesh Shade. And what I'm going to use this is thin down once again. I'm painting this between the muscles. This is just going to soften up some of the transition between the, uh, the different skin tones that we used. It's a very quick step. Nothing crazy. If you overshoot a little bit, it's fine. If you undershoot a little bit, it's fine. It doesn't make... Uh, a huge amount of difference if you make a lot of mistakes with this because it is a skin tone shade. If you want to create more shadow, you can glaze this over the bottoms of arms and deep recesses and stuff like that. That's totally up to you. And then the last thing we're going to do is add a little bit of carry bear crimson um, across all of the veins. Just add a little bit more color. And that's all I'm going to be showing you in today's video. This is obviously a different style of video than I normally do. I usually just show you the painting of a miniature from start to finish. And I would love to get some feedback from you guys, whether these short form um, clips that are focusing more on one specific thing are something that you guys would find useful and want to see more of in the future. I do know that in some of my videos, I skim over other parts and I got a lot of questions in the comments asking me, well, what, how did you actually do that? Or what colors did you use here? Me thinking when I'm making the video that I'm being super clear obviously isn't translating 100% through to the content I make. 
and I want to make sure that my videos are as helpful as possible for you guys at all times. So I apologize if I haven't been uh, concise in the past and uh, hopefully this video will help you guys to paint skin in a more uh, manageable way to a slightly higher standard and get your characters and heroes um, looking pretty swish. But like I said, if you have any other ideas on specific short form things that you want to see, please put them in the comments below. I will take absolutely everything on board. And I really do appreciate all the feedback, comments and nice stuff I get heard from you guys on a daily basis. A few uh, snapshots to uh, finish off the video. And then just a quick word from uh, Handsome Devil to uh, finish off the video. Okay guys, and there we have it. I hope that with these few tips and tricks, you guys will be able to go forth and paint skin tone a little bit better, have a little bit more detail, and have a little bit less fear. There's a huge thing in the hobby about if you can avoid painting skin, you do it. Every space marine has a helmet and so on and so forth. This model is absolutely stunning and there is no way I'm gonna leave it in the condition it is now with just its skin done up. So next week on my Twitch streams, both Tuesday and Thursday, I'm gonna be bashing out the rest of this miniature and getting it finished up and added to my collection. So if you want to join me then, I stream every single Tuesday and Thursday between 8 and 10 p.m. Irish time. And I would love for you all to join me and get some hobby done. All right, guys, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoy it, make sure you give it a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. And if for some crazy reason you're not already subscribed, please take two seconds later and hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.